Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are live in Maui at the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit. I mean, it is an incredible to be here. I'm here with my co-host, Daniel Newman. We are struggling here in Maui. It's tough. This is rough. But somebody had to do it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's never a big problem for me. And if you ever want to not come along, we can go ahead and yeah. zoom you in. But uh, hey, it's nice to be here. I always say, first minute I step outside in Maui, the air hits your face. You're excited, and of course we're excited here because this week is always a big week for what we love, which is what's going on at Tech at Qualcomm. That's right, and it is the day after the big announcement day, and we are here with Chris Patrick doing a debrief of the huge announcements. Chris, great to see you. Hey, great to see you both. Yeah, maybe you can weigh in on whether we should uh, relocate the 6.5 to Maui. I don't know, but our customers get our choice, so he's in. I think in. it makes sense. Really, I think and we need deeper <laughs> collaboration, really, and more discussion. So I think if we're co-located here, exactly. I think it'd be important for me to join you. And maybe on the beach. That might yeah. make sense. So, hey, let's dive into it. Daniel, you want to kick this off? Hey, we've got Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. A lot of announcements, a lot of focus on that. Let's just start there. How is this, you know, all the announcements you made for that? you know, driving the future of premium, the premium tier. You know, this is always a big week for us. This is always a big time of year for us. Really announcing the new Snapdragon 8 uh, for us and really for the whole industry sets the tone really for Android uh, premium tier for the next year. Uh, so this is our annual tradition is, is launching our new uh, 8 products. Um, and just like, you know, the way you use your phone is very diverse, like everybody uses their phone differently, it's part of your everyday life, but again, different ways for different users. Uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has incredible upgrades really across the board for each of those different types of users. You know, so if you're a user that really is a, a business user, you're really focused primarily on using it for sort of email and enterprise applications and things like that. We have big improvements in security, big improvements in uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, big improvements in 5G connectivity. You know, if you're a gamer, so that's really what you use your device for, we have huge improvements now on gaming, immersive features that will give you just ray tracing in particular, that are going to give you effects that really blow you away. All in, you know, much better performance, much better power envelopes, you can do that gaming use case at higher frames per second uh, for longer. Uh, if you're somebody who uses your camera primarily, you're going to see some incredible improvements here on camera. We've combined camera and AI together in something we call the cognitive ISP which really, uh, yeah, it means that your camera now can process the environment around you, decompose in real time the environment into different structures and different layers, and then process it differently at the pixel level using AI. Some of the effects you're gonna see from your camera are gonna be incredible. So anyway, we're incredibly excited about the AI, about the 8 Gen 2, and, uh, and yeah, we're looking forward to all the devices that are gonna launch. Yeah, you've been really successful with your premium Android strategy, and I forget which investor day uh, you brought out, or maybe it was last year here, where it said, listen, this is the flag we're planting, and this is where we want to do well. And then I saw a, a lot of really good vendors increase uh, their, their mix with you. It, it was really awesome. My favorite, I know we all have our favorites, but I'm a, I have every version of the Fold, the Samsung Galaxy Fold that's ever been made. And one of the things I'm loving, and I'm not, you know, we're not pre-announcing here, but I am looking forward to seeing the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in new devices. So let's sharpen this point here. What are the biggest differences between the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and the Gen 2? I know everybody doesn't upgrade every year like I do, uh, but some people do. Uh, it's usually people who might have a two-year-old phone. Uh, what can they look forward to on one versus two? Okay, great question. And the Fold is a great device. So yeah. That happens to be my personal device at the moment as well. There we go. Okay, so um, yeah, the Gen 1 versus the Gen 2. Big, as I said, big improvements on the experiences, right? Again, better camera, uh, better underlying security, better connectivity, AI improvements throughout, some really exciting uh, changes. But there's also just the raw horsepower and the raw power efficiency of the solution. So on the CPU, you expect to see uh, especially in multi-threading applications, we have a new micro-architecture micro on the CPUs, a new way of combining those CPUs, so we have a higher performance um, cluster of CPUs. Right. And so you see some big improvements there for a lot of different use cases, so that really is gonna be impressive. So that's gonna be a 35% improvement in multi-threading performance, as well as a 40% improvement in power efficiency. Then the GPU, much more capable, much more powerful uh, GPU. So again, for gaming, for all those kinds of use cases, anything that uses the GPU, you'll see significant improvement both in performance and power. 
And then AI, I've mentioned a couple of times, but AI is one of the things we've really focused on in this uh, generation of the chipset. So, for example, natural language processing, which is when you literally you want to talk to your phone, uh, have your phone interpret your speech, or even the AI engine has to interpret uh, passages and try to understand context in text. So that's called natural language processing. In those kinds of use cases, you'll see four times uh, the performance. Four times the performance, along with 60% better uh, power efficiency. So we think this is really going to unlock all the creativity in the whole industry with better peak performance as well as better power efficiency. So that combination, we think, is going to produce some pretty amazing experiences in devices like the Fold and, and many other. I'm excited. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting, though. It sounds like we're all Fold users, by the way, yeah. which, is, which is cool. Uh, I still kind of just get a kick out of doing that, like unfold, fold, fold, you know. Yeah, every time you do it, basically, <laughs> you're just blown turn, away right? about exactly. the fact right. everybody looks at it. Yeah, I'm right. totally. like, what planet are you from? Yeah. Like, what device is this? Totally. Is it a tablet? Is it a phone? Yes. Oh, yes. You know what? Like, when I'm on a plane, it's the best because it's like the perfect compromise when yeah. you're like watching a movie. Graphics look great. And, and so, you know, Pat hits you up with the trick question, right? Gen 1 versus Gen 2. You had your matrix memorized. But I think in the end, when people <laughs> end up picking, like, hey, we're going to go upgrade, and right? And, and every phone manufacturer wants to shorten the cycle. So there's this challenge is that you've made such good devices. Eight one, Gen 1 was really good, right? And it's like, well, do I need to upgrade? So you kind of gave the 1 versus 2. But let's put that question in a different context. So I'm a user, and I just went to the store, and I upgraded to this newest device. I've now got 8 Gen 2. This better power, better performance. What does this actually mean for someone, like, when they're playing a game, like, is it noticeable? I mean, do you think you can give examples where someone can really notice that, hey, I needed to upgrade because this one year later, it sure. is better? Sure. Well, first of all, we want anybody that buys a Snapdragon 8, even if it's lost a Snapdragon 8, right. we want them to know right away this is a premium device. Right. So they don't need to worry that it's not going to be a good experience. You buy a Snapdragon 8, even last year's, it's going to be a good experience. So, so that's the first. So honestly, I don't mind. If they want to buy last year's, uh, no problem. Um, but, you know, we think, again, there's going to be pretty compelling differences even at the user level. So, again, let's pick uh, gaming for a second. So, gaming, um, as everybody knows from the PC side of gaming, it's a place where, you know, if you give users 20% more, they'll take 20% more, right? Everybody's hungry for um, better response time, right, over, over the connectivity engine. For, some, for example, over uh, the FastConnect 7800, we have much faster both throughput and latency. Um, so that means if you're playing games over Wi-Fi or over 5G, you're going to see better response time. Uh, that means you, you shoot the bad guy um, and you have a little bit quicker uh, response time. Maybe uh, even people you could do. be good at video games yeah, there with, you go. with Gen 2. Nope. You know? Okay. No skills. But, uh, and you'll see um, better frame rate, right? Better sustained frame rate. Even if you're playing for 20 minutes, you're on that plane ride you're mentioning and you're gaming uh, on the plane, you'll see better frame rate. Absolutely, will have an impact. Um, we can also take the, the improved performance and the improved uh, power efficiency and use that to add effects on top of things. So one of the things we're going to pioneer on this, on this platform is ray tracing. Uh, so what that is, is, again, if you've seen it on, on consoles, you've seen it on PCs, it's, gonna, it's pretty spectacular. Uh, so it means you can see real reflections, real uh, light right. propagation effects. You know, on your fold or another uh, type of device. Well, even extending um, to your living room TV. Yeah, right. That's a lot right. of people do that now, whether right. it's wirelessly or through a small cable. That's right. The ability to really see ray tracing to me would make a more demonstrable experience on a, on a larger display, I think. Not that it's, I mean, the fold, it would be great, but even bigger because the lighting is so much better and the lighting is so much realistic. More that's realistic. right. That's right. Yeah, the, the detail, certainly on bigger screens, the detail is more evident. But, uh, but as you'll see some demos of ray tracing at the show and as we shared uh, yesterday, you can see some pretty spectacular effects, even on a smaller screen. So we're, we're very excited. Yeah, how about on the, uh, the camera side? I mean, it seems like there's this insatiable thirst for camera improvements, no matter what they are. That's right. And everybody's one-upping each other. I mean, the ability to remove images in the background, the ability to have a much better digital zoom, so you don't have to have a, a huge physical zoom, kind of getting closer to that DSLR type of experience. How about in the photography experience? No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think just like gaming, it's one of those yeah. places where you give people 10% more, they will take 10% uh, more and still want, want more. So on imaging, you know, I think we all know we could walk outside and look at the beautiful uh, kind of Maui weather. Um, as the sun sets, it starts to get, you know, there's light in the background, but shadows and things like that. Your brain can process everything and understand the context. Uh, so that's really what we emphasize here on, on the Gen 2 and we're going to keep working on is really providing 
the full dynamic range um, experience, right? That again, you capture with your eye. Yes. Full ability to go from very bright to very darks. The ability to understand context. Right? So AI here is gonna help our camera become again the cognitive ISP as we call it, which is really understand context and then adapt. So for instance, you know, the green leaf is processed a little bit differently in real time, is processed a little bit differently uh, than the ocean, is processed a little bit differently than skin tone. All those kinds of things are gonna be done in real time as the pixels move through the system. So you're gonna see some pretty spectacular effects on, on, um, on the HN2. And then when you apply that to things like upscaling, you mentioned zoom, digital right. zoom, all those things. All those are things that depend on context. And so having a camera supplemented by AI that's able to understand the context and apply it, again, you'll see some pretty spectacular things. Hmm. I'm wondering how much I can get now on the used market for my Gen 1, because I really want that Gen 2. He's gotten me all excited here. I know I saw all the videos yesterday, but you've kind of like spun me up again. Um, so how do we get one? What partners, who signed up? When will devices be available? Because I want it, and I want it now. All right, you have it soon. <laughs> That's he the knows, answer. He, hey, he knows people. Listen, so uh, honestly, we were very happy with the, eight, the Gen 1. Right, so the Gen 1, you know, we had over 200 different uh, models. I'm, I'm done, Gen 1. You're done with I'm the Gen done 1. With it. I want, you want Gen, the Gen 2. 2. I understand, we're going to get it for you. <laughs> so we have already uh, 15 different uh, OEMs signed up on the Gen 2. So yeah, you'll see devices launching uh, very soon. I yeah. couldn't imagine who they might be. They hmm. could, many uh, <laughs> names you might know. Uh, many names you might know, really. The, the privilege we've had actually over the last few years is you know, Qualcomm and Snapdragon 8 really has become synonymous with Android Premium, with Android yeah. flagships. So really, if you're somebody that's building a flagship device, you're probably working with Qualcomm. Yes, thankfully, I mean, because that is my device. I mean, I carry multiple phones, and I've got you know the smallest phone I can get to do messaging with my family, but my real phone that I do real stuff on is a premium Android phone that, of course, is based on Snapdragon. That's great the right stuff. choice. I'm that's excited. the right choice. Well, I think that's a great way to sort of finish up for Chris here. You know, you just give him a little extra advert. Well, doesn't he actually hand us one on the way out? Um, Isn't that how this that, works? That's typically how these, these, these events Oprah? work. Is that Oprah? Um, okay. Well, Chris, Oprah. Okay. It's the same thing. All right. All right. Um, yeah, you should definitely check under your seat. But, but in all serious, you know, to kind of summate, it sounds to me like a lot of very uh, tangible improvements that people are going to be able to notice at the same time. I do like the fact that you continue to lean in and support the predecessors because people made big investments in recent times. And you know, nothing kind of stings more than you'd buy the really expensive and just find out that there's better. But that's been the thing is the continuous improvement has been meaningful, but people even using one and two and three generation old Snapdragon devices are still getting really good premium tier performance. And that's, that's, right. that's what we've liked about it. That's at least what, you know, I think both of us in our, in our content and, and different tracking of it is, hey, whether you have a, you know, a 20, a 21, a 22 of the Samsung line, for instance, you're still getting really good performance. But of course, with each generation, you give the buyer something that they want. And I love what you're doing with AI. I love what you're doing with ray tracing. I mean, you're really making a compelling premium tier model that people can be excited about. So Chris Patrick. Uh, thank you, thank you, we think so. Thanks so much. And you know, just one more point. I think you, know, you talked about things that users will notice. One of the things users can trust in Qualcomm is we're also investing underneath that in uh, things that they don't notice in making sure the phone is as secure as possible. So that uh, every image, every piece of software written uh, is secure, resistant to hacking. And we make sure that underneath that infrastructure is, uh, is as pristine as possible. Uh, so again, users can buy a Snapdragon 8 device and know uh, it's protected, it's secure, it's a premium device, and it's, uh, it's a device they can trust. So, no, anyway, I love it. Proud. I love it. And you tend to actually deliver what you say you're going to deliver. That's right. As opposed to Slideware. I mean, I track the entire industry, and there's kind of like a, a lot of cash uh, checks uh, written but not cashed, they're not actually coming true. So I do appreciate that we can bank on what you do. Like, I love the, even the fingerprint. That's right. I love that freaking fingerprint. You know, it's like, boom, boom. I know, I'm excited, I get giddy. Okay, I'm gonna take us out of here, Daniel. Let's so, go. Uh, Chris, just wanna thank you for coming on the show. I uh, really appreciate it. Hope to have you on again sometime. Absolutely, and great, uh, great, always great to see you guys. I'm sorry I don't have a device for you, but I'm gonna- That's okay, next maybe time. next time. I'm first next on the list, I'm sure. Absolutely. So this is uh, Pat Moorhead and Daniel Newman with the 6.5 here live at the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit. Uh, we're glad you tuned in. If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to have comments for Daniel and I, and uh, you know, everybody's out there, we're still on Twitter and of course LinkedIn. Tell us what, we, what you like, tell us what you want to see next time. So have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are on the planet. Have a great one.